Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new post bag. So we've got a total of three packages. Um, they arrived uh, during the week. And this one arrived first and this one then this one. So we're going to start with this one. It shows connector times one and circuit board times one. Um, so let's see what's inside it. Of course, a lot of packaging. This is this. Yes, this is it. No. There you go. Ah, this was the one I was looking for. A BSC splitter. Uh, useful for splitting A, B, and C. Nothing fancy. And this. Now, this contains. Um, Something that I've wanted to have for quite some time. I saw it on uh, a variety of YouTube channels uh, and I wanted to make my own one or to have my own one actually. Um, this is a component tester so you can insert uh, various components into the ZIF socket that I'm not really seeing right now but that's okay. And then uh, it will test the component um, and it displays various uh, parameters of the component like inductance, uh, all that stuff. So this is going to be a nice tutorial, uh, a soldering video, maybe ASMR, not sure. So that's uh, something I've been looking out uh, to. Alright, so the next one, I'm hoping that I don't cut in something, I think I'll open it here, because it feels very fragile. Ah. Uh, just packaging. I thought maybe it was a, uh, a box or something, a small box. No, it's a. Uh, yeah, we call it Dino, Duo, something like that. I purchased uh, some other things from this brand as well. And this is a uh, BNC, two BNC, to be used for the splitter. So we can mount uh, one side to here and then mount the other side of the wire, this one, to the oscilloscope. Also rather nice. And now the final big package. I'm going quick, uh, guys. I need more post-pack items. And I think this is the... Oh, it's in a box. I wasn't expecting the box. It felt like... Oh! Straight into the recycle bin. Oh, adapter. Okay. And why is that adapter for? Because I thought it had a DC jack. Now this... is where all the BNC stuff is for. This is a signal generator um, and that's also something, oh it, uh, it broke, I'm not sure how this is supposed to, I think it goes like this, yeah it does. So Banggood you'll receive an email from me very soon. Um, now, I'm hoping that these are the specifications. Yeah, there you go. So it's a 9 volt uh, input at the input jack. Frequency range of 1 hertz to uh, 65,000 uh, hertz. High speed frequency up to 8 megahertz, blah, blah, blah. Uh, nice little screen. Uh, amplitude is 0 0.5 volt peak to peak to 14 volt peak to peak. That's nice. 
Now there is a salt tooth and reverse salt tooth uh, triangle a square wave and I think there's also a sine wave yeah sine wave yeah easy G wave and noise so I suggest that um, oh this is really nice I was a little bit worried that these didn't came with the thing and I was just left with all the wiring that I had which means basically nothing yeah, the BSC to BSC and the splitter. Now this, ah, this is the adapter. A uh, 240 volts AC to 9 volt 1 amps DC. With the plug, of course. Um, so let's power this on. Because I'm quite curious at what it does. Sign one uh, kilohertz. It's off. Mm. Nice. All right. So drop the DC splitter. Or right, actually, we don't need a splitter, but the BNC to BNC. And connect it to the DDS. Oh, these aren't that strong and tight. And connect the other end to my oscilloscope. Oh, now I wanted the uh, amplitude to be digital, but it isn't. Oh, okay. Oh, this is the frequency. So to... Can I have multiple? No, I can't. I can't even change the frequency. Oh, this is the setting, I think. Yeah. Noise. Nice. All right, so turn on my scope. And let's see what's up. What signal it generates? Uh, one kilohertz sine wave. Uh, measure. So let's turn it on. Oh, and of course, my probe is still at times 10, so that wouldn't work. Channel 2 is also on. Coupling AC, DC. Oh, this is a pretty nice uh, sine wave. That's got a little bit of uh, the offset isn't really working. Well, the offset goes back. Triangle. The offset is not permanent, it's momentarily. And that's not. Salt tooth, oh yeah, that's a salt tooth. Reverse salt tooth, oh, also easy. Oh, this is just a random pattern or something. Frequency tab, noise. Oh, this isn't noise. 
let me uh, point the camera at the oscilloscope. So we're looking at a one kilohertz sine wave. Now, in order to get the frequency, there you go. So it's basically spot on. And it's a pretty nice sine wave too. If we zoom into it, it's pretty funny because you can see the individual bits that make up the actual sine wave. So yeah, the peak to peak isn't shown. Let's output it. Peak to peak current is around half a volt. So let's increase it. This is about three quarters. Oh. This, this is strange, this is the offset knob that I'm rotating. So with the offset, you cut off some of the voltage, a peak to peak of 1, of 14. I was looking at the RMS. So this is strange, because this isn't offset, this is just voltage clipping. If I leave it at half, it isn't properly centered also. So this, this is about where I would want it. So the amplitude is correct. Now if I rotate it back down. This all the way. And my trigger isn't uh, there. You go. A little bit of noise. But that's due to, to the, that's due to the tiny amount of voltage that I'm outputting. Look, if I move the offset now, it moves up and it goes back to the center. So I'm not really sure what that offset knob is for. I'll just put it on the position that it works. So this is, uh, yeah, this is the sign. Uh, let's change the frequency to 100 hertz. Yeah, you can see the individual steps here, too. Uh, it's close, it's not, let's clear it. Oh. Uh, I need frequency and peak to peak, there you go. So it's not exactly at 100. And let's put it to 1 hertz. There you go. So now it's at uh, 1 hertz. Oh, this is too uh, slow for my uh, scope to properly. So 10 hertz. Oh, this is pretty reasonable. All right, and let's go all the way. Oh. This is going to take a while. I like the buttons. They're clicky and they feel nice. All right. 
right, so a few more steps. Oh, it's already at max. So, this is the max output frequency that it can do. Oh, damn, that looks uh, clear. Let's add some voltage to it. No. So the higher the frequency, the um, lower the uh, detail, of course. Now this is at uh, 65 kilohertz, so nowhere near the scope of, uh, of near the spec of my scope, 200 megahertz. So let's turn it back down. Frequency is at 100. It's good that they provide an option to set the frequency step that the software steps with. Otherwise you have to wait uh, for quite some time to for the frequency to get to the desired setting. So this is um, 335 megahertz. Oh, it's close enough. It's close enough. Pick to pick all the way up. So let's turn it down. So, I think that this is a good one. Current, why is my current pick to pick? Oh, it's clipping, I think. Make it like this. Right, so this is halfway. It's interesting because the pick to pick is not halfway it's at three point uh, it's almost at four volts as you can see so now it's at 14 and half of 14 is not four so there's a big dead range here oh yeah oh well it's a nice little thing and it's useful to have because my scope has got a signal generator option. I think it's under the digital. And it's freaking expensive. So this is a better option. Only shame about the uh, about the case. So let's uh, check out some other. Um, so this is a square wave. And it noticed me that there's a lot of spiking. Actually. As you can see, the signal isn't really that clear, and I think it's not the connection. The connections are really good, actually. So the the same with the triangle. Uh, no, not with the triangle, but with the sawtooth. So triangle looks pretty good. And as you can see with the sawtooth, this is the, the, the regular sawtooth and you can see a little uh, little drop there. And if I do the reverse sawtooth, it's at the, at the top. So the same as with the um, square wave. Um, so, yeah, that's not the clearest signal. This is ECG. I'm not sure what that even is. And it also got some random noise, which isn't really random. As you can see, it's just bit banging ones and zeros all over the place. Um, yeah, I'd like to see uh, this different. At, uh, the preferred signal of the noise was uh, a little bit different to me. No, fuck. I was expecting uh, uh, another signal for the noise, cause yeah, it's noise, but it's just oh, let's put a 800 value here and a zero value here, and then it's 560, and it's all over the place. I'd like to see a more continuous signal that you'd expect, but maybe that's due to the accuracy of the 
signal generator itself. So yeah, it's all over the place. And random noise hasn't got uh, a frequency. Mm, it also got a high speed mode. That's the other connector. Now it's turned off. And it's set to 8 megahertz. That's this. And the voltage is fixed for this setting. And the offset also doesn't do anything. And I think that this is supposed to be a high speed square wave. So let's change it to 4 megahertz. Yeah, it's 4 megahertz. 2 megahertz. 2 megahertz. 1 megahertz. 1 megahertz. So this is pretty good. But again, you can see the wobbly lines that occur uh, when the thing suddenly goes flat. Which isn't a problem for me, but hey. And, oh yeah, that's something I'd like to test. Um, I just noticed that, look, I can't screw it in uh, this connector, for example. This is a female splitter and I need a male splitter here. So, I think I'm going to buy a new one, um, but we do have the leads, and if I, oh no, I can't connect them both because the menu won't browse. No, that's a shame. I was thinking about connecting the high speed output as well as the regular output, but the menu doesn't browse. So. No, it's uh, it's pretty good. Um, can we AC coupling? Why is it an AC coupling? We need DC, boy. Uh, let's do a square wave again then. Yeah, it doesn't look all that good again. But actually, I'm visible trace. There should be a. Um, let's reject. A way to put some load on this. Oh, does not got any side frequencies? What was that? Um, So it's at 335 hertz. No, I need to figure this out a little more. I've used it, the FFT, but it's it's not showing me what I wanted to show. The whole view is is gone. Maybe. Uh, I need to reset this. Max hold average. So well. Um, and I also can't find the load option for the. Uh, now somewhere you can set the resistance. And I'm not sure where. Maybe here. No. No, this shouldn't be it. Uh, so yeah, that's the signal generator. This is again a square wave. It's pretty, pretty okay. But as you can see, the peak to peak is 15 volts. Now it's at max, and now it's at 16, which isn't. The, the, there's a two volt overshoot there. Um, maybe if we add a resistor, it will get better, or maybe not. It will get worse. We can test that actually let's disconnect this one and let's meh. connect a probe okay. 
with a 70 ohm resistor in power and series to the output signal and see what's that what is that So I've gone for 68 ohm because it was the closest match. Oh. My probe is. There you go. Nope. It's still there. But the output stayed the same which is a good thing the peak to peak voltage so uh, adding a um, resistor doesn't really help maybe if you put it between the positive, positive and negative I think the whole signal will disappear yep the old signal will disappear. So, all right, cool. Signal generator. So this was something that I um, um, felt I needed for quite some time. Uh, and I finally purchased one. So it's a, a nice little thing. Yeah, as I said, I'd like to see this um, amplitude and offset control digital. Uh, maybe the offset is only for a certain setting, for a certain uh, square uh, wave um, signal output thing. Um, I haven't used it that much. And yeah, this is the BNC splitter. Now as you can see, this doesn't fit on here. What it does fit in is the connector that fits on there, because it's basically that connection. Look. So now I've connected this, these to here, the BNC to BNC, and now I've connected my probe. Yeah, it's a possibility. Now I can use uh, this to connect to the signal generator, and it would also work. But then again, if you need to connect multiple of these together then you're out of luck because oh. that uh, yeah that isn't working so well, I, I, I do feel um, and see that these wires are pretty nice actually they feel really good they look oh, really good actually for the, the price they uh, they are so this uh, is going to be used and uh, yeah so here are all the mill back items again these yeah basically this so all the items again I thank you guys for watching and uh, oh, there's one thing I'd like to say about the uh, windmill project. I've been working on that in the background pretty, pretty hard. Let me uh, grab the circuit real quick. So I've been working on the windmill project really hard in the background and this is what I came up with. It was a nice um, design Arduino, uh, six MOSFETs, two MOSFETs for the brake, you know, high power lines that go over the um, Heat sinks that the brakes were connected to, uh, connector for the um, BLDC, uh, in and output voltage lines, uh, and a MOSFET to switch charging. 
uh, and it fits inside the case um, and the motor is able to be fitted on top of this and it also it looks really good except one thing and that is you can see it on camera this spot on the Atmega 328 it means that this Arduino is blown so basically I can throw this away so um, the windmill project is having delay uh, delays again um, I will design and maybe simulate my uh, own circuit so that I know for sure that uh, it works because the main uh, issue that I thought I was having was that when there's no power in the capacitors the Arduino isn't able to switch the gates of the MOSFETs and no power is able to get inside the capacitor there is power here but that's because of the uh, rectification that happens with the body diodes of the MOSFETs but this MOSFET needs to be switched and I think what's caused, what caused the issue was that there, um, the pull up resistors are connected to the 20 volt line 21 volt line or the positive output of the rectifiers which is around 21 volts I put 21 volts on the capacitors with my lap bench and I think that somewhere in here or here or there I'm not sure maybe over here well, anyway that the 21 volts line um, touched one uh, of the resistors and burns the crap out of the microprocessor so again I'm going to design um, a board uh, in Eagle um, check if I can do some simulation and also the USB connector came off so yeah all of a sudden that thing just came off and I haven't even used it so that's um, yeah that's pretty nasty but I uh, maybe I'm going to take off the MOSFETs. I'm not sure. I uh, did order uh, other MOSFETs because these MOSFETs were fairly low power. As in, I think they could handle around 20 amps at 25 volts or something. And yeah, of course, with the winds, if everything is right and there are no short circuits, I think that my BLDC is able to um, reach 30, 35 volts so that's uh, that's way too less there for the MOSFETs so I ordered MOSFETs that are I think one is 90 volts and then it that goes 12 amps or something and the other one was 15 or 50 volts and uh, 20 amps so the total power of both MOSFETs uh, is around 200 to 250 watts per MOSFET that I ordered so that's pretty good and then I could also implement a proper connector for the um, uh, Hall effect sensors because now it's got a flunky gas uh, uh, connector and it you know with a little vibration I'm scared that it uh, flies away and that's something that I don't want to happen inside the um, the windmill that I need to take it apart uh, four times before uh, before I get it to work one time so that's a quick update on the windmill uh, I hope um, uh, that I've got some more information that I can publish regarding the windmill and um, until that time I see you around on my channel bye Thanks for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also share this video with your friends if you think they will like it too. See you next time.